Welcome back to Minding Our Businesses, where CEO and COO sisters share unfiltered conversation about running three companies together and and the the real real life between it all. Episode five, hiring and firing, dot, 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 the dirty details. Really dirty details. Really dirty. I always get asked all the time. People are like, have you ever fired anyone before? I can't believe people are so surprised by that. I'm like, yeah, I've fired many people and hiring and firing is hard. It's one of the hardest skill sets I had to develop over my career for sure. It definitely takes some time. Yeah. And well, some I mistakes. Think you have to learn from experience. You yeah. can't learn from a book. And it's just, you know, firing, I think, seems like dirty and exciting to people. But I think hiring is 100% just equally tied into that. And um, it's not, I would say firing is not fun. Like, it's definitely something I dread. And it's something I hate that it's like one of those things you go to bed at night and you're like, oh my God, it's tormenting in your stomach and you know, it's going to happen. Tormenting. And then you wake up and you got to do it. It's just awful. So the old, old adage, adage, the the old saying, the what? The saying goes, (laughs) what is happening? Higher, slow, fire fast. That's, that's the name of the game. So you're supposed to take your time to hire, really get to know the person. But the second they cross you in the wrong way or they cross an HR problem the wrong way, you fire them immediately. Like there's, you don't keep someone on your team that could be a cancer. And I have done that before. And I've learned the hard way that if you keep someone on for too long, they can affect your culture very negatively. Typically when you get that feeling of like, this person's not meant to be on the team or this person seems like they're just not happy. It's relief on both sides. Yeah. Which always kind of gives you kind of a nice feeling. True. I think it doesn't present that way at first. At first it's awful. Yeah. But then when there, well, we've had different ones where it's like you get relief on both sides and other ones that are like so blindsided. They had no idea. Oh, definitely. Like there's, yeah, I think there's some where it's mutual. And then I think there's some where it's like, they hit slap us and they're quitting and we're like, fuck, like we liked them (laughs) or like, how are we going to replace them? Or, you know, everyone, there's that also that saying everyone's replaceable. I used to say that a lot at the beginning of my career, but at this point in time, like, I don't really feel that way anymore. Like, I feel like I love my team so much. I don't feel like every person's replaceable at all. You also want to work with people who want to work with you. So that's just, well, yeah. One of my biggest things I say in business is that it's all an agreement. Right? Like if somebody feels like I'm their boss and I'm here to tell them what to do, then like you're already at the wrong company. I'm here to lead you, guide you, inspire you. But if you're here to kind of like lean on me and like kind of just coast along and look at this as like where you're just totally, it's never going to work. Yeah. Like if you're setting your alarm to appease me in the morning, right? like then it's just not for you. You got to do it for you. And you got working for a small business too. You have to be like fully invested in the concept and the the go, go, go and the hustle and doing multiple jobs. It's a different nature. Like you you, have to believe in the company too. Totally. And the people you work with. Well, I think one thing too, that has caused a lot of like fires or like not good hires over the years for us is I think people are very like against management in a lot of other work cultures or like they're not like they don't like their bosses. Mm -hmm. I would be sick to my stomach if I ever thought someone didn't like me on my team. Like I just, I would feel that energy. And to be honest with you, when I have felt that in the past from somebody and that's happened, you know, some people don't like my vibe or like my energy. That's okay. Or mine. Yeah. Or yours. And that's when I know it's like, we're supposed to make an agreement here in terms of working together. It has to be mutual separate ways. We shouldn't yeah. work together. Yeah. Um, and that's okay. It is okay. So I think one of the things to start this episode on, like w- this will get funny, but like, to, I think it's funny, but it's also serious is firing as a boss from the perspective of like, you know, the person doing it or even hiring and interviewing is equally hard on both sides, you know, like it's not something we go into and we're like, this is so fun and exciting, like power trip. It's something that requires a lot of, I think, negative energy transferred into positive energy and you don't want to hurt people and people are sensitive and I care about people's feelings, you know? You never want someone to leave with a bad taste in their mouth. Well, yeah, it's not good for reputation. 
Yeah. And it's also just like as people taking our job titles away from it, like I feel for people. Yeah. You feel for people. Yeah. I, well, Even I, if that person yes. doesn't think that we do, we do. Well, yeah, I think you can often like if, if you're not in a mutually beneficial relationship where you guys see eye to eye on the perception of life, it's very easy if you continue to stay in that relationship, like in a work setting where they'll start to like hate you and like kind of turn you into this monster. And it's just it's just never going to work. They're going to end up and frankly, quitting or firing, time for getting that. fired. We don't have time. We for don't have it. time no. for that. And you don't want to ruin other people's space. That's happy. And that's just really what it is. You know, one thing I wrote down like in kind of preparation for this is usually when you're hiring someone and, you know, you and I talk about this a lot, the person you hire is usually a very different person 90 days later after you've hired them. That's probably like every business feels that. (laughs) Yeah. Well, I think that's like one thing to take note of is if you aren't, if you're listening to this and you're someone who works at a company, that's something I think employers take a lot of note of. Like I'm like, okay, yeah, you can try to bullshit me and like show me your resume. I don't care about that. I always talk about like energy resumes and I'm like, I can tell immediately spiritually if I like you or not. I don't even need to see where you've worked or what you've done. But you know, then 90 days later, the real person's kicked in and it's like, who are you going to be? It's tough. That's probably the biggest like sucky point of hiring (laughs) because it's like, you really try to be on the same energy field as the person that you're hiring and like you believe in them and then they come and join your team. And then there's times it doesn't work out and it feels like you're letting the team down. Yeah. Um, but you're just doing your part from our perspective, from our perspective, it feels like say we hire someone and it doesn't work out. It feels like you're letting people down, but yeah, we're just doing the best that we can in order to try to join people to this team that we think are going to work. Yeah. Well, everybody's just here doing their job, right? Like that's just part of our job. And we have a three part interview process. Like Carly is the bulldog of the company. Like you have to get through Carly. Woof, woof. (laughs) You have to get through Carly twice before you get to me. And Carly (laughs) is really good at I think you're just like, I think you've actually cultivated that skill very well as a chief of operations. You know, you used to judge people, I think very quickly. Now you've learned to like love people. Like I think exactly as they are and like kind of find that mutual relationship. It's a tough skill and it requires learning and like being okay with making mistakes because there's times where like just in my personality, generally I can write people off really quick, like you said, and learning to wait a second and realize, especially with unique abilities, that you want someone different than you in that role. You don't want someone who will do the role just like you do. So I found this quote for the, you know, third episode in a row. I'm, I'm, I go hard into certain mentors and then kind of dip in and out. Andrew Carnegie, loving him right now. Teamwork is the ability to work together toward a common vision. It is the fuel that allows common people to attain uncommon results. For me, that hits hard because you just can't be an entrepreneur. You can't be someone who builds an empire or someone that does great things without a great team. I am literally nothing without the help of my team or the support of my team or, you know, like the mutual respect of my team. I care what they think. I want their feedback. I want to know what they think about certain situations. So like, I think that's a very important thing in a work environment. All right, so let's get right into it. Let's talk about some of the fuck ups. Let's get dirty with it. We've fucked up. Like we we are the first to tell you like hiring and firing is hard and we have fucked up with it many times. So I would say it's a learned skill. Um, one fuck up that I think makes it really easy to kind of screw up on from the jump is if you're too desperate desperation. Yeah, like we have been there before where we're doing every job and it's like, I would say we'll talk about it, but like kind of the front desk is like a really a good example or like hard positions to hire for. We're like, we need somebody. And if you just throw someone in that role and you're just like, they'll make it happen or like whatever, that's definitely an area I think we've fucked up. And we've definitely past. learned from mistakes with that. Hiring too quick, never a good idea, but also blindly believing what people say. I actually watched someone have an interview the other day and it was like randomly just like didn't seem planned. It didn't, it was kind of random, like off the cuff, which I think is a mistake too, because you need to plan your interviews out and make sure that that person is taking this role seriously. Prepare. You have to prepare for these type of things. It can't just be, it can be emotional, but it also has to be logical as well. Yeah. I think 
like in terms of our perspective too, we have to prepare too. Yeah. Like I think a fuck up we've done in the past is like going into an interview too nonchalantly or casually. I think, you know, these are things we've learned from and it's like, what are the questions we're asking? Do the questions apply to the core values of this company? Will they give us the answers we need to really understand this person? And you and I have gone through so many phases of funny questions we've asked people. I think there was like an entire phase where Carly and I, when we were interviewing for Parlor, where we asked people to describe how they would tie a shoe. <laughs> and honestly, it I was laugh, a great question. I laugh now, but I think it's smart because you need to be able to think quickly on your feet. Yeah. And, and then there was another one that was like, how many golf balls, how many fit, golf in a balls bus? fit in a bus? Yeah. Um, we like, were trying to like kind of think outside the box with the questions we'd ask people because when you see, when you throw someone off their rocker in the middle of an interview, you can really learn a lot about them and like their reactions. One of my favorite questions ever that we, I think we still ask is, um, what would someone who doesn't like you say about you? I love that question. That question's my favorite. And they're people, always like, uh, what? I either get, that's a good question, or I get like, no one doesn't like me. And I'm like, you're lying. Yeah, well, there, that's the thing. You can just, so from human psychology, you can learn so much. So like my fuck ups in the past have definitely come from like not asking the right questions. I would also say like another, that's like hiring problems, but like another thing with firing has been, I've definitely, because I'm so passionate, this company is my DNA, right? So the people that work here essentially somehow become a part of my DNA. Mm -hmm. It's very personal to me who works here. I've had people who have kind of like wronged me in the past or I felt in my perception I was wronged. And when I went to fire them, one fuck up I had was getting, I think, too heated or taking it too personal. And I can admit that. Like that's a moment like I really had to meditate on is, I would get like blood shaking mad. Like if somebody did something that was mean to me. Well, I think just in our nature, we per, not present, we are very loyal people. So when we have a small business and we're so connected with our employees, it feels disloyal. Yeah. And I that, feel very, I'm very loyal to and my I, people. I'm so loyal. That's just like in my nature consistently with friends, with anybody. Yeah. So in my work, in my workplace, I'm the same. Well, yeah. If you cross me once and like, I really mean that. And I don't mean that in like a threatening way, but if you cross me once in like a way that makes, cause I front load my trust to people. Mm -hmm. Right. And like, I think that's a really important characteristic in personal and professional life. I will give you a hundred percent of my trust off the bat. You don't need to earn it. You don't need to slowly obtain it. But the second you do something that makes me lose my trust in you, whether even if that's 1%, I, in my experience, now know that you're never going to be in my life for long. And that's when, like, I, in the past, I think the fuck up for me was, like, getting too emotional about those, the 1% loss in trust. But, like, in the past, like, I've had employees that, like, I've done really big things for. Like, if they were struggling in their personal life, I would go decorate their apartment or help them mm -hmm. move or something and, like, spend my free time. And when it wasn't reciprocated in a way, I think it caused me to, like, it shook me to my core. Yeah, because you treated them like a friend. Yeah. And we, we always treat everyone like a friend yeah well that's front loading the trust like I front load that you and I will have a mutually beneficial relationship and then you know I think there's a human on the other side of all of the HR and you have to remember that people I care about these well, that's things what's different about small business versus bigger businesses too is there's a person on the other side but you think about when you're firing someone they think oh this is happening to me this is only about me but there's also it's also happening to us and yeah well that's living in 5d that's knowing that like everybody is in the part of the relationship together at that point. So I would say, you know, there's also been a lot of funny times, <laughs> like <laughs> hiring and firing can be very comical. Um, there's some things I sadly cannot say on this podcast because they were very inappropriate when they were yelled in my face, but you know, I've been through the ringer with people and the things that they say. Very when, bold, weird statements. Oh my God, the weirdest. I mean, just a few funny stories though. Like, so Leland and I, when you were still in college, you, you weren't working for Beauty Parlor yet. Leland and I were desperately looking for a salon manager. I think back to this day that Leland and I did these interviews. And honestly, in my head, it looks like a comedy, like a scene in Step Brothers, almost like when they're applying for the jobs. And like, if you ever saw the people we took for interviews from Craigslist, I mean, I mean no harm in what I'm saying, but it was like the weirdest group of humans. I, <laughs> I interviewed people in a construction site. I had never interviewed people before in my life. We didn't know what to ask people. I remember one of the first interviews we ever took as the, for the salon manager position was a man named Larry. <laughs> no offense to, to Larry. If you're hearing this, 
you were lovely and no offense to men in the salon management position at all. But this man had no experience in yeah. salon management. <laughs> he, he, his current employment was being, a, you know, a con union construction worker. And so when we interviewed him, I don't even know why we took the interview. We were like, it was your inexperience. We're like, Larry, <laughs> what, what could you offer us, Larry? <laughs> I remember Leland and I left that interview and we were like, what just happened? Yeah. I mean, I feel that way about like the hundred of front desk interviews oh, yeah, that we've yeah. taken. Oh yeah. That, I mean, we'll get to that. That's like a whole other topic of conversation, but yeah. So that was a funny interview story. And I wonder where Larry is now. I wish you the best, Larry. Thank you for your interest in beauty parlor and RLR studio. Now parlor. Now parlor. Um, Okay, this one was a funny one. This one was, again, I think an early on beauty parlor. I was hiring for hairstylists. You know, hairstylists are a different breed of human and I think are uh, people I personally really respect. I think that there are some people who, you know, are a little bit out there uh, in the hair world. I once interviewed a woman who was drastically on drugs during the interview. I mean, drastically. And she filled out her entire application vertical. All the lines were horizontal and every single line she filled out vertical. How do you even do that? I don't know. It was like literally all the words were just up and down. And we ended up looking at the application after she left and Leland and I looked at Leland because this is when I was like, you know, I didn't understand how to hire for culture. And I looked at Leland and I said, she could work. And Leland was like, Rachel, she is not working here she's <laughs> under the influence <laughs> like I, I, maybe she'll change maybe she can make it happen you would have looked at me oh, and been wow. like never now that's why we have a two-part interview yeah exactly well, no it's three-part interview <laughs> literally i'm the third part do you have any funny interview stories i just have funny conversations in interview stories where like they just go like they have nothing to do with what they're interviewing for a lot of people will come and interview and be like, I just like love parlor. And like, I just want to work at parlor. They, well, I think a lot of people think you clearly, if you guys don't know, is the chief of operations of all three brands, but you're, one of your titles is also beauty director. Yeah. You run the salon. I don't think a lot of people realize that because you're so in the behind the scenes background. So Carly takes every single interview for the company, but beauty wise. Yeah. They so, come to you and I think they think unicorns are born think at parlor. Everyone thinks like, it's just like part, they're like, I love the vibe that parlor gives. And I love that. But that's not, it, there's a lot of hard work that goes into it. Right. And that's your first response always when it, they're like, I just want to be a part of the energy and the vibe here. We're like. And I love that. I really do. I do I too. Think people I wanting do too. to get involved in the energy and the vibe means that they just want like a home. And I think that's always a nice feeling. Yeah. But I, there's just definitely some red flags when things are being brought up and it feels like people just want to work at Parlor because of what Parlor is. Well, yeah. Because that's when you and I from experience know 90 days later when you have to haul ass to kind of be a part of this environment and work hard, we know you're going to drop off. So it's like, you have to also come with a skill set if Which you want to be a part of the crew. It's happened so many times. And that's what I'm saying. Like we've learned from experience and from those kind of fuck ups. But um, I think the COVID hires were super, they were difficult, difficult. It's hard to enter because we couldn't meet in person. Well, yeah, that's an important part of the interview. Yeah. And could. you, I feel like always get comments when people like, will not know you're my sister. I literally hate being like, and I'm Rachel's sister. I think it's people so will weird. come in and be like, I, I follow Rachel on Instagram, which I love. <laughs> it's funny. And they're like, I love Lily. Lily's so pretty. That's I'm so like, hi, I'm Carly. I'm Rachel's sister. I, and it's just funny they're like, yes, we know. know you're getting married. This is Carly. Her fiance is Joe. I, I actually have to tell you though, while that's funny and like it makes me giggle, I like that because to me it means one step to me and like you entering the scene of this business is like you better have done your homework. I love it too. Did you read the website? Right. Like how you, much is a signature exactly, facial? Exactly. <laughs> like literally how much is a hydrofacial relax? How long is it? Um, so yeah, I think those are funny moments. One time during a makeup interview when I would, I would always have the makeup artist that would work for us, like apply on my face. Cause I was obviously a makeup artist. Yeah. And I remember this one girl, she was doing my makeup in an interview and she kept looking at me going, going, look up to Jesus. <laughs> Every single time she would like have me need to look up, she'd be like, look up to Jesus. And Why? I, I don't know. But I was like, what? Did you hire her? Yes. <laughs> You're out. Goodbye. 
She's, Listen, part of my passion. She's no longer with the company. Part, she is no longer working here. Part of my passion, that's because she lived like so far away. But part of my passion is building a company that I think makes a safe space for a lot of people. I, I, it took me a long time to learn who could be a part of my club and who would, couldn't. And that only could have come from experience. You know, like it's just, it, you have to go through the ringer. So like, I do believe still to this day that all of my companies provide a place for people who didn't fit in elsewhere and found their home with me. And I will say one of the proudest things I hear is people say that they'll never stop working here. Like that they'll work, they'll leave here in a coffin. And I'm like, when you're old, you know, but it's the I, best feeling. It is the best feeling because it means that we've done something right. Culturally. And if, if there's someone who doesn't feel like that, it's easily able to, you're able to tell. Well, that's the thing by contrast. It's so you can just tell who doesn't fit into that mold. And there's people that will try to be like half in the mold, half out the mold. And we're like, we, we know who you are. Yeah. I think it's because my um, meditation coach once told me that this business is a part of my aura. And he was like, the reason you feel so tired at the end of every single day and that you need so much self-care to re regroup is you could imagine that your aura has expanded to these businesses and people are actually stepping physically in and out of your aura all mm -hmm. day long. And I feel that I feel that too. And I know that you experience that. So it's like, it's not like, Oh, we're watching. It's like, Oh, I feel you. I feel you. Like when people, when we made that big move from beauty parlor to RLR studio and we moved to parlor and we like the team had to kind of transition, you know, like mm -hmm. I, we were going from like a really small town business to like a really huge, like world destination. Yeah. And there were people who weren't down with it. And it's like, they didn't need to tell me they weren't down. I felt in my heart, they weren't down. Yeah. And like, we feel you and we don't want to feel you. <laughs> yeah. Like I don't want like, to feel I don't that vibe. Feel it. So that's where it's like kind of like retracting yeah. that feeling. I mean, as far as firing is concerned, they're the things that people have said to me have, I, like I said, been comical. I've had people who have like left and been like, you don't even follow your own dress code <laughs> as uh, upon leaving. And I was like, thank okay. you for your feedback. <laughs> um, there have been other things said that I don't think are appropriate, but um, I can tell you that it's obvious that over the course of time, you can just tell it's all about energy, right? It's all an exchange. You can tell who's in that field and who's not. And I think we've broken the mold of like being able to be around people that we actually want to be around. Like well, yeah, a lot of graduation, point. a lot of businesses hire to hire. They have to, right? But we really take our time. Like, I will no longer just fill a position to fill. Yeah, but I have to say, I think that's one of my keys to success. Like, in terms of small businesses or even corporations, you know, like, you need to value every single person that adds to the energy of your culture. And you need to really value what is that culture. That will be a whole other episode is how to build the culture of a brand. But... What is your culture? Who do you want to work there? Who do you want representing you? And if you're someone who works there, who do you want to be as an employee? Right. And like, are you just someone who clocks out? You know, on TikTok, there's so many people right now that are like in this corporate culture. And like, yes, I think corporate culture can be really toxic. And I think that people can be really overworked. But I also think that there's a way to communicate and be mature and not these girls that are like going back and forth in corporate conversations with themselves, kind of joking about like where their line and boundary is and like that they won't go above and beyond that boundary. That's cute and fine, like for you. But like, if I'm working with someone that does not go beyond that boundary, not to the point of like mutilating their self-care, I, I obviously... I'm an advocate for self-care, but if you aren't showing that you're all in with me and you're going to be that person that's like, it's five o'clock, I can't work with you. You have to put in the work. Yeah. And again, another story for a different day, but you have to put in the work. So let's talk about an example you and I experienced, um, a lesson that was really great. That was actually a little bit more recently. We were hiring for my assistant position. Yeah. And a couple mentors we had told us, this is a really hard position to hire for. And they were right. Yeah. Because they're so close to you. And I think it's like, if that person doesn't ebb and flow at the same rate as you, like it's really hard to have that position work out. Yeah. And I think the world has an example of what an executive assistant is. Oh, definitely. But ours is a little bit different. I think ours is a little bit more scrappy. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good, you've been using that I word like a that lot. Word. Scrappy. So, you know, I was interviewing for this position. I had someone previously a little bit unpolished in the position. So I was definitely seeking someone more polished, I guess you professional experience. Yeah. And so when I was interviewing, I was down to two interviews, right? 
one girl was, you know, I would say unprofessional in the interview. Swore in her interview. She swore. She was adorable. We loved her. She was like us. And we were like, we love this girl, but like, oh, she's like not totally there yet with professionalism. And she then was like showing us random pictures of her dog. Her we dog didn't even had just her. passed away. And oh, it was so sad. It was so sad. And she was like, want to see my dog? And I was like, oh, this girl is adorable. But like she's showing me pictures of her dog in her interview. Like, could this get too personal? I, like I had so many things running through she my mind. She seemed distracted. Yeah, like, I don't know what she seemed, but she was just, like, I didn't know if she was the right vibe. And then this other girl we were, like, down to the final interview with was very polished and, like, put together and seemed like she had corporate experience. And she could keep up. Yeah, she could keep up with the conversation. She, she seemed with it, too. So when it came down to the wire, we were, like, this girl is more, like, emotionally our vibe, but this girl is sort of, like, more per- professionally, like, seems like the the choice that we should make. Yeah. And in the end, we made that choice. And, and we were tormented over the tormented. choice. Yeah. We would decide this and that we would I'm go like, back and let forth. let me get your opinion on this. I yeah. went to my sounding board, like, who should I hire? In the end, we hired the girl who was more polished. Yep. You know, get to that 90-day mark or not even. I think it was like six, maybe a month. That was a mistake. I don't know. She was <laughs> a nice girl, but definitely not in the right position for her. And I think she didn't realize it. We didn't realize it. And then all of a sudden we were like, this is, this is just not going to work. Which is tough being who you are because people want to be close to you. Yeah, that does, it does happen often. And I think, um, you know, she had to get fired. I, I fired her. Um, it, it ended very she quickly. She was happy. Yeah, I think it was she fine. She was happy. It was fine, whatever. But it just like, we made the wrong choice. So then we call the girl who was unpolished and who was like a little more rough around the edges. And we're like, you know, we didn't hire you, but we think maybe we should have. And we made a mistake, yeah. Come in for an interview. And at first, I think she was, like, shocked to have heard our name. I think she was shocked, but, like, super excited. Oh, hell yeah. yeah. So this this little chica was Lorne, my, my current assistant. And yeah, who, we love you, Lorne. Who we love so much. And, you know, it was a big lesson to me because it's not as an employer – I sometimes have to look beyond the interview Mm -hmm. and sometimes that's important. And like, especially for this role. Yeah. Especially for this role. And, but all, but all roles, like you have to be able to like, I once interviewed someone who was fantastic at their job, who who, their thong was showing, you know, in their interview and I still hired them and I still love them and I helped them work on their dress code. And, you know, not everyone's perfect or presents perfect in the interview, but, and then you have to kind of decide what are you willing to kind of work on them with. But that was a big lesson for us. Yeah. Because Lauren is really great at her job. And I think it's also a big lesson, like, just because you hired someone and they were one certain way doesn't mean if they didn't work out that you hire someone that's completely opposite. Yes, that you was know, a big lesson that's for us, it, for sure. That's just not it. It's based on the person and, like, what yeah. they're saying and, and their, their experience. Skill set, yeah, What they're willing to do, what they're mm-hmm. willing to contribute. So Lauren... You know, I think she is now polished. I think she's, Lauren has become like a prodigy to us in terms of like, we help her and sculpt her. And she was young. I mean, she's, she was a baby. It was three years ago. She was such a baby. She was like, I think just turning 21. She never had her first real work experience that wasn't like with family. And, you know, she felt like family to us, I think right off the bat. So I'm really glad we hired her because we love you, Lauren. Love you, Lorna. Lorna. But yeah, I think to those who do take interviews, I think one lesson I, I give to you is be yourself. Don't be over polished. Don't be over hidden in your personality. And I think just be true to you. Yeah. I think that's okay, you know? And also a lot of these interviews, and I think that's different, what's different between us and other people is like, you need X amount of experience to apply for this role. Or you need five years of experience or whatever. Yeah. And then no one gets those roles. But if you actually hired based on who the person was yeah. and how they want to work, like I think about Jesse, our brother, yeah. when he was looking for jobs, every job said you need two to three years experience. Yeah. Then you hire and he's like excelling. Oh, he's incredible. And we do that. We hire younger people out of college. Who we don't give have, people a shot. Who don't have as much experience and they work out great. Well, and I'm I, a college dropout. Yeah. So when people are like, I'm young or, you know, like our, the, we don't look at it like that. No, the manager who runs all of parlor, she's 24 and we give her all the responsibility in the world. I don't look at age and think one day you'll get there, honey. I look at it like you want to hustle now. Let's go. Well, that's the thing that we were talking about on social media, what you were saying about people online who are like, 
I want to be this now, et cetera. You have to work for that. But these girls show us, yeah, they're the next generation, honestly. And I love teaching them because I love working with people who are moldable. But yeah, hiring them, you know, there was a phase in time where I think we got like lucky. And then I think there was a phase in time where we got smart. Mm -hmm. Um, I would say, speaking of hiring and firing, the hardest position you and I have ever had to hire and fire for. Front desk. Oh my God. The Achilles heel of a salon. At our salon, you know, most salons you go to, the hairstylist will likely book themselves mm-hmm. or they'll have like one person because they're not that big of a salon who kind of does this role. At our salon, you know, we're huge. It's we a, like to have three. It's We like to have three, maybe four, depending. And, yeah. you know, it's not an easy role to hire for. I think it's the, the role we, we hire and fire for probably the most. Now I think we've gotten to a really nice place, like where we have three solid people that are like just incredible. Mm-hmm. But the benefit of working at Parlor is like we do all of the admin for our hairstylists and our spa team, and we care about how that's done. And I care about the efficiency of that front desk team. Oh my god! And the customer service to me is top tier; needs to be top tier at all times. It's the heartbeat of the business. And there's people who I think see front desk receptionists, and they're like, "Oh, I'm going to do that role for one year, and then I'll like move up." Well, it's a transient position, and we don't look at it that way. We look at it as a career. It is a career, and that's my favorite role of the whole company. It's so fun. It's so fun. It and has to be to- for the right person. Uh huh. I think that position has given us probably the most. Mm -hmm. education all in all it's been you know I would say a full 12 to 13 years of me kind of having experience in this and it's funny I still feel so young but in a lot of ways corporate wise I'm I do have a lot of experience with hiring and firing now and building a strong team and I love it now yeah I love it too well I love the opportunity to interview new people and bring new blood to the company and you know give new opportunities to new people that's a passion of mine for sure And I think in the past, I would say three to four years, we've really excelled on adding to our team. Well, yeah, I would think a lot of the things we're talking about right now are probably more past based, but I think there's no one on my team right now, or I could foresee hiring that I would need to fire. You know, I think you get to a place in a small business or even from a corporate perspective where you get good at it. Mm -hmm. I've gotten good at hiring. And I think, you know, I've learned those lessons learned from the fuck ups. And now I think you and I have a really good, we see the red flags much earlier. We definitely do. Yeah. And I, I'm proud of us for that. And I love our team, you know, like shout out to our team. They're so cute. And so, supportive. and they know when someone's not meant to be here. Well, that's the thing. It like, they sort of Those edge themselves fucks. out. They'll they, come up to us after and be like, no, not the vibe. They'll see us interviewing someone and be like, absolutely <laughs> not. Or they'll be like, maybe, but we uh, take their opinions into consideration. You know, we work with our friends, so. Yeah, and they need to like who comes down there. 100%. But yeah, hiring and firing, it's all about the culture, and it's all about recognizing there's there's two humans in that conversation. And give people a chance. Yeah, spread the love, people. Spread the love. And, you know, I think be patient, too. I once heard that somebody needs to hear something seven times before it actually resonates into their psychological brain. In, in a work setting. Yeah, and if you didn't get the job and you interviewed somewhere, it just wasn't meant to be. Or if you didn't get the job and you wanted it, don't stop trying. That's another thing. Like, I think being scrappy in these things, don't just take no. I don't actually agree with what, what you said, though, because I think if it might not be meant to be, but, like, you know, sometimes we're trying to obtain a client and, like, we want to work with them. Sometimes we have to make them understand our vibe. You know what I mean? Yeah. Depends on the role. It definitely depends. But I think you can try hard and show your personality. Don't just be polished. And prepare for your interviews. Always prepare. I'm proud of us, Carly. You're a cuckoo. I'm on cuckoo. Cuckoo. All right. That's a wrap. Episode five. Much love. Love ya. Love ya.